please welcome Glee Principal Iqbal Thieber to present our Best Television Series Award to producers Ian Brennan and Alexis Martin. I think all uh, good ideas, uh, no matter how irreverent, come from God. And uh, Glee is such an idea. Thank you so much for uh, including us. Um, and I would like my friends Ian and Alexis uh, to come on the stage and accept the award. A few weeks ago when we learned Glee would receive this award, the other creators of the show and I sort of looked at each other and we said, really? Because <laughs> our first thoughts were that A, Catholics and Media had not seen our show, <laughs> or that uh, my dad, a former Paulist, had bribed them. <laughs> and then at a certain point we all sort of just shrugged and thought, well, we'll take it, because we thought cynically that it would actually be really great to have once we uh, began to be boy boycotted by evangelical groups, which a few weeks later actually happened. And I hesitate to even gratify this by mentioning it, but there, <laughs> one of the cast members found uh, a website that was so inflammatory that it actually... <laughs> In any case, we were happy to have a religious award under our belt. Um, but the more that I thought about it, the more that my puzzlement that we'd been honored with this award actually actually puzzled me. And my reaction belied a division in my own perceptions about the Catholic Church, and that's kind of what wanted, I wanted to say a few words about. I think there are kind of two churches, and sadly, when people consider the church, I think they're forced to think of its contingent that I identify with the least. And I don't mean to bash the church. I identify with it very, very deeply. I'm very defensive of it. I, I recently kind of stopped dating a girl when she made a disparaging remark about Catholicism. <laughs> But it's difficult, as Catholic, to see William Donahue go on TV and sp speak for me and all other Catholics as if he had that right, or watch bishops deny communion to people whose ideas they don't agree with, or to hear people throw around the term cafeteria Catholic as if the tenets of the church itself were so flimsy that they can't stand examination. And sadly, I think it's that church that most people see. But I believe it to be just a tiny, tiny fraction of the true body of the church, the one that I grew up in and the one that I feel that I know. I think being Catholic is a lot like being Jewish. I believe that it is not a set of beliefs, but a heritage, a 2,000 year meditation on the very idea of belief. I consider this its enduring beauty. I believe that therefore, almost by definition, you can disagree with most of the things the Catholic Church does and still be Catholic. I believe it is precisely the tension of this dialogue that begets a living church and is, in fact, what sets it apart. And there would be a lot of Catholics who would disagree with me about that, though that's sort of the point, that they and the church can be wrong, as can I. My mom always tells my sister and I, don't let anyone tell you you're not Catholic, and I think she's right, just as you wouldn't tell someone they weren't Jewish because they liked ham. It's, <laughs> it's the dialogue between different attitudes towards scripture and towards belief that begets a living church. I believe wholeheartedly that honest, deep skepticism is as holy as religious devotion. I believe that pondering the nature of God, even questioning his existence, is itself a form of prayer. I think the Catholic faith is at its most beautiful when it acknowledges we have minds, which kind of brings me in a weird way to my point. I have always struggled with belief, as I think that most honest people do, and there was a day when I was a teenager, I was maybe 17, and I actually think we may have been raking leaves, but I sort of came to my dad with the fact that I couldn't really fathom how there could be a God. It just didn't seem like it was at all true. And then with just a flick of his wrist, my dad just sort of turned to me and offered an explanation, which is years later kind of became sort of the last scene in the screenplay, Glee, which is how our TV show sort of began its life and spent its infancy. I'd like to read this scene to you. Those familiar with the show, you won't recognize the characters anymore. They no longer exist, and the context may not matter. But this scene is two teenagers, the two main characters, sitting on a stoop late at night after a show choir competition that was ruined when Curvin, 
who's going through withdrawal from his dad's prescription painkillers, drinks a fifth of vodka before the performance, and projectile vomits all over the stage in the middle of a Peter, Paul, and Mary song about the bombing of El Salvador. <laughs> And Pepper, a freshman girl, consoles him. Pepper speaks, quote, I spent some time kind of looking back at some of my journals, and I came across this passage that was like from sixth grade or something. And I found this passage where I'd written something which I didn't seem to make any sense. And like, it didn't have anything to do with what I've been writing about. And like, most of the stuff I write kind of dies in childbirth, like, never quite makes it all the way out. But I'd written for some reason, I'd, I'd written about this time when my mom and I were at, at Wendy's for lunch and there was this old man sitting by himself just drinking a coffee and eating like just a plain hamburger, like one of the 69 cent ones with just a coffee and, and I just, I felt so bad for him. Or like I didn't feel bad really, I just kind of felt for him. I, I wanted to like be with him. I just wanted to sit there and keep him company and, and my mom and I sat there and, and ate and she was talking and the whole time I just wanted to go over and sit with him. This old man I, I didn't even know, just sitting there alone, eating a 69 cent hamburger all by himself in the middle of the day. And, and there was like no way he could ever know that, you know? Like there's no way he could ever guess that, that I felt that way. And like I thought to myself, just as I secretly love this old man who I don't know, sitting across the restaurant from me, and there's no way he could ever know, like I believe there could be something like way across the cosmos, unbeknownst to everyone, just like loving us. And there'd be no way we could ever know it. It would just be there. And it was like this weird, incredible gift. And I think I've stopped even like needing that love for myself. It was enough to just stand near it and watch it and know it exists. And I, I think it makes the rest, I don't know. I think it makes everything else pretty easy. End quote. <laughs> and I don't know, and it, it may be a stretch, but there's something very holy about raking leaves, racked with skepticism, and your ex-priest dad with a flick of the wrist explains the existence of God to you. And that, to me, is the Catholic Church. Thank you. Thank you.